What's up, y'all? I got a banger from the Modern King. Let's get straight into it. The cafe in Melbourne is protesting the gender pay gap like we've never seen before. One week out of every month, men pay an 18% premium. The cafe called Handsome Her also has priority seating for women. Welcome to Handsome Her, where women reign supreme. Dames, so it's a wall of inspirational women. Sandra O'Brien calls it a space for women by women, with priority seating for females and an extra tax for men. We have an 18% premium for men, which is the same amount as the gender pay gap. I think it's... Bro, chat. Bro. The gender pay gap is not even real. Chat, do you, do you agree with the gender pay gap? Here's the thing. Men work harder jobs and longer hours. Why would you guys get paid the same if we're working more and more dangerous jobs that pay more? There's no gender pay gap. There's a gender skill gap, maybe. Men do harder jobs. You guys want to do the underwater welding? You guys want to do that? That's what I thought. The offshore drilling? You guys want to do that? No, it's dominated by men. Plumbers, electricians, dominated by men. STEM, dominated by men. 80% of the STEM workforce, science, technology, engineering, and math, is men. Ladies, you can go out there and be an engineer. You can go out there and be scientists. You can go about, you know what I mean? Like... But you don't want to. You want the social services jobs. You want being a social worker, being a teacher, you know, being a front desk receptionist. Like, come on, stop it with this gender pay gap. So dumb. It's fair if you think about the world, the gender inequality that we have. I think it's a brilliant idea because um, I don't think that many people know the actual gap. They think discrimination and... That's what I'm saying. It, it, at the end of the day, it is discrimination. They're discriminating against men. If somebody opened up a cafe that was discriminating against... <laughs> women like that oh my god <laughs> it'd be crazy fortunately for them this uh rule number one women have priority seating rule number two men will be charged on 18 percent premium to reflect the gender pay gap which is respect goes both ways are you respecting men by charging them more so silly bro this backfires hilariously as we will later see but so far but but dude I've been to Australia. Australia is extremely woke. Extreme, like feminism is rampant there. Uh, none of the cafe's male cut refused to pay it. I could wear that. Yeah, considering that there is a fair, yeah, it's a fairly unequal pay gap between men and women. The reason why. <laughs> he just says, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> uh, so we're going to charge you about 18. He's like, I ain't paying it. <laughs> Who's going to enforce it? What are you going to do about it? Why the very tiny amount of male customers that have went there didn't have a problem with paying your tax is because they have no self-respect for themselves. Clearly, since they willingly went to a place that's entire purpose is to discriminate against them for being a man. Uh, yeah, it's a fairly unequal pay gap between men and women. Even though there is supposedly equal pay, it doesn't, it doesn't really equate out there. Staff say the gender tax isn't aimed at excluding people, but rather educating them, with proceeds going to charity. First off, the man tax is not the only form of discrimination written in your house. I'm sorry, but us as men, we, are, we have to be in the draft, so we're prescribed to go to war if something pops off, you know what I mean? Um, we work more dangerous jobs. There's more unalivings that are men. More bricklayers are men. Like, what are we talking about? Like, this is so silly to me. But would actually work. She called every man who called her out for her blatant discrimination and sexism fragile. If a man created that same... <laughs> Coffee shop in Brunswick made international headlines for charging 18% man tax. We'll close this doors for good on Sunday <laughs> after less than two years. <laughs> Received backlash, reverse sexism, male patrons, let's see. While the business did not confirm or deny rumors of bankruptcy, co-owner Alexandra O'Brien, Conan O'Brien's sister, I guess, Handsome Her team will continue to pursue its mission to drive change with hands-on work across Aussie land. Exact restaurant next door to where she... Uh, O'Brien said allegations of sexism only proved how fragile masculinity is and confirmed the need to confront and dismantle the patriarchy. The patriarchy built the modern world that we live in. What are you talking about? Google the richest women in the world, like where they got their money from. It's Divorce. rough. It's rough out there, guys. They, they ain't starting businesses. Mm -mm. <laughs> They're marrying dummies. <laughs> it's almost all of it is divorce. 
feminists do not want to hear this, but there was one woman who was the richest woman ever from uh, a startup company, Elizabeth Holmes. She had a, ran a company called Theranos. She started it herself, dropped out of college to start this company, and it was a total fraud. It was all fraudulent. She's going to jail forever. <laughs> she was worth $34 billion at one point. It was a blood testing company. They falsified all sorts of data oh. and they lied to investors and all sorts. Of she used to dress like Steve Jobs. She wore a black turtleneck and everything. And I saw her speak once. Um, am I, am I uh, dressed like Steve Jobs? <laughs> I feel like I'm wearing the, the, I'm wearing the black guy. Like, fired all sorts of data and they lied to investors and all sorts of. She used to dress like Steve Jobs. She wore a black turtleneck and everything. And I saw her speak once. I'm done dating, man. I really am. Do y'all see what they said on the news today? 56% of women have a backup plan. 56% of women have a backup plan. That's crazy work. And it was that either that old friend or your guy friend. Which y'all always say is just a friend, and then you end up being with the friend. They research studied this. I literally watched it today. They did a test, a psychology test. Some of them are already happily married, but mm. they still have a backup plan. Why, bro? Why? 21 love, bro. One love. I'm staying single. I'm staying single. I'm shopping at Target. I'm not, I'm not hollering at any girls, bro. I'm done. Bro, I'm telling you, you want to find a girl, go to Target, because she's already there looking for stuff she don't need. Fired. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. TJ Maxx, Target. Bro, you can get a girl out there quick. They're already shopping for stuff they don't need, so they might as well pick your ass up. Now, in the wake of my feminist awakening. Feminist awakening. Buckle up. My default position is that I don't care about men's feelings. Oh, what a novel idea. I don't think we've okay. ever heard that before on the internet. And what brought about this great epiphany? I don't care about men's feelings. And that is a position that that is a place I had to arrive at after a lot of self-work. Go on. Wow. Because the patriarchy... Of course, the oh, patriarchy, wow. the source of all known evil in the entire world. Now do tell us, what has the bad patriarchy done this time? The patriarchy socializes women not only to care deeply about men's feelings, but to prioritize, to prioritize those feelings over and above our own health. Our own health, our own well-being, our own mental and emotional stability. No. No, it doesn't. I'm really starting to believe that a lot of these individuals out there that have tried to blame everything that has ever gone wrong on society, not to mention what has gone wrong with their own lives, on that nefarious patriarchy, may have unfortunately not been given the skills necessary to be able to navigate society as an adult, in which a person needs to understand that if you don't take care of yourself first, you can't take care of anyone else. What's your age? The, the patriarchy. It's just, it's just a modern woman buzzword, right? It's not my fault. Uh-oh. It's not my fault. It's just the patriarchy's fault. I, it, it has nothing to do with me. The patriarchy built the modern world that we live in. You like the phone in your hand? You like the AC on? You like the clothes on your back? You like the car you drive? The house you live in? The road you drive on? All of that was created and made by men. You should be thankful that men have done that for you. My Here's my hot take, chat, and tell me if you agree. I believe the world is such a nice place, especially in America. America is such a nice place to live in is because men were like, hey, the more comfortable we make the women, the more we can bust the cheeks. <laughs> and so they were like, you know what? Let's make it, let's get the AC pumping. Let's get them, let's make a bunch of department stores. Let's, you know, let's let, get them spending men's money. Let's, you know what I mean? They were like, the more comfortable these women be, the more we can beat the cheeks. <laughs> but you really got to think, to get on a deeper level, you got to think, how much violence had to happen for us to live the nice cush lives that we live right now? You, you can go into a career now where you never even have to go outside. I did sales, corporate sales for a decade. After COVID, I barely ever left my this office right here. I stayed right here, made cold calls, ran meetings. I didn't need to go anywhere. I didn't need to even re like interact with people socially. There's so many people out there that just sit and vegetate at home and can make a six-figure salary. It's crazy to me. Where back in the day, you wanted to make a lot of money, you had to be out there. You had to have connections. You had to know people. You had to have a business. You had to have employees. Nowadays, you can just be a software engineer. It's nuts, bro. It's absolutely crazy. 26. 25. Should he have any say in how you dress when you come out the house? Absolutely not. I'm going to dress how I want. 
But you don't think that attracts a certain kind of attention when you're out? I know the way I dress attracts a certain type of attention, but I mean, my man should be secure, you know? I think I should take her for who she is. Yeah. So if I. Uh, stop. No. Take her for who she is, a day walker? She's dressed like a stripper, dude. What are you talking about? And and the thing is, she's preying on this man. No woman really wants to date a girl, or no woman really wants to date a guy younger than her. He's 25. She's 26. He's probably got money. She's just probably spending his coin. And he's a sucker for believing it. I like her for who she is right now. I should be okay with that in our relationship. Yeah, exactly. Would you still want to have girls nights even if you were in a relationship with him? Absolutely. I think it's very healthy to have girls nights. I'm not going to stop hanging out with my friends because I'm in a relationship. Of course. Chat, no. Let me know, let me know if you agree. I've told Cass, I'm like, no more girls trips, no more girls nights. You're not doing none of that. You can talk to him on the phone. You can FaceTime. You can text. You can Snapchat. But you ain't. Uh, you ain't going out on no trips with your girls. You're not doing date. You're not doing girls' nights. If y'all want to go get lunch, cool. But you're not going to the club. You're not going. You're not doing none of that. First, I'm gonna prioritize my man. But I also, those are my girls. I'm not gonna stop hanging out with them and having girl time. Do you feel like this would be appropriate to wear on a girls' night out with your girls? A hundred percent. I think it's appropriate. What gives you that idea? Oh, what's wrong with it? I think she looked like a damn snake. I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong. Dude, stop simping, bruv. Stop it. I think she looks like a snack. I think, you know, I think she, I think she, 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 she. How about new? No, you're not wearing that. You look like you work the streets. What's wrong with it? You don't think it gives a message of, I'm on the market, you know, any guy can come talk to me. Leaving nothing to the imagination. You're wearing a skin-tight bodysuit. I already know what your body looks like. This is, this is marketing 101. You're marketing a product that men want to buy. You're marketing your sexuality. You're marketing your body. Of course men are going to approach you. And you're going to be flattered by it. Because if you didn't want men to approach you, you'd be at home. Because they can't come talk to me. You can't help can't. how good you look. But you can <laughs> help the response you give to other exactly. people. Exactly. He doesn't care what she does. Bro, uh, simp. She got him a good one, I guess. Because he is willing to simp extremely hard on this girl. To pay for the date. Yes, the whole entire date. That is how about new? I'm going to try to pay for your date, honey. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Includes my Uber to the date and my Uber back to my house. If you are a man that I'm interested in, I want to see that you can provide for me. I want to see that you can afford an Uber ride. I want to see that you can afford a nice dinner date. Like, can you afford basic things? Because if you can't afford dinner and an Uber by transportation, you certainly can't afford kids. You certainly can't afford a house. You certainly can't afford my bills. And I got bills to pay. Okay. This sort of list of demands is absolutely a turnoff to all men because yes. they all know that when this is her attitude, she is not reciprocating. She's not putting an effort. She's literally just existing and she'll actually call that effort. No, a man wants a relationship because of what can be created within that relationship. But when it's pretty clear that a woman just wants to take, 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 especially this early on, that man is just going to look elsewhere or he'll just decide he's staying single. I want to be a wife, but I don't want no man with kids, even though I got kids. What? Stupid. That's crazy. I know, <laughs> but I don't have. Why? Why don't you want a man with kids and you have, do you have primary it, custody? Do you I have do. primary custody? Do I have primary custody? Yes, I do. It's okay. not the kids. I'm fine with kids. I don't like the baby mama drama. Hmm. How many fathers do you have? One. And where is he? Incarcerated. For the rest of his life? <sighs> mm, not for the rest of his life, no. But he's married. Doesn't matter. Still could be drama. You think so? I don't think so. I don't, I've never had He's drama. alive. He's oh, alive. But I've never he's had him. But he's, uh, okay, but he's alive. Correct. So you don't want... A man with kids because you don't want to deal with possible drama, but you want a man of, of high value man to deal with a woman with kids from a man who's in jail. I know. Yep. That's um... stupid. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. The stories write themselves, Chad. <laughs> I love it so much. Uh, let's hop into the Reddit. We got a clip from Desex, happy wife, happy life yeah. comedian Jeff Allen. I learned happy wife, happy life. That's what I learned. 
And um, my father, on his own, in his own way, sat me down on my wedding day, tried to tell me the same thing. He looked at me and he says, before you argue with your new wife, and believe me, you're gonna argue with her, before you do, stop and ask yourself two questions. Do you wanna be right or do you wanna be happy? And then he broke down and sobbed right in front of me. It was <laughs> absolutely pathetic. I had no idea what that man was talking about. 28 years later, I'll tell you this, I'm a happy, happy, happy man. I ain't been right in 12 years. Times I have to ask my wife, am I happy? Oh, you better believe you're happy. Okay. <laughs> I was just checking with you, buttercup. Call my buddies up. I can't go golfing, but I'm a happy, happy, happy man. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, we argue. You've got to argue in your marriage. You don't argue in your marriage, it'll build up in your brain over time, and it'll fry your brain. And over enough, enough years, you wind up like those babbling, mumbling people in Florida. Don't tell me you haven't seen them. They're scary. 50 years walking down the street. The wife, she's perfectly fine. It's the poor husband eight feet behind him and it scares me to death. Guy's all hunched over, vibrating, mumbling to himself. Always telling me what to do. Well, I'm gonna start telling you what to do. I'm a man, you can't tell me what to do. I'm a man, I'm a man, I'm a man. This poor guy's trying to win back all the arguments he's been throwing away for 50 years. He was 6'3 when he got married. Now he's four foot one. Look at the poor man. Weighed down by a half a century of apathy. Leave a toilet seat up if I want to leave a toilet seat up. Tell me what to do. Hope you sit in the water every night. I don't care anymore. That's when she turns around. What'd you just say? I didn't say nothing to you, woman. <laughs> So you got to get it out. You got to learn to communicate. That's the word, communication. Dr. Gary Chapman wrote a book called Five Love Languages. According to Dr. Gary Chapman, there are five languages of love between a man and wife. Tammy and I read that book twice in one week because our love language wasn't in there. <laughs> Apparently, bitterness and sarcasm isn't part of Dr. Gary Chapman's love life. They do say couples that give each other a hard time and like pick on each other though actually love each other more. Cause can you imagine being in a relationship with somebody and you never get to roast them? Like, why do you guys think I, I like roasting so much? Is because Cass and I do it. We do it all the time. We give each other a hard time all the time. Like Cass, and, and as weird as it sounds, she's one of my best friends because she she can like read my mind. Have you ever had that with a friend where they like almost know what you're gonna say before you say it? Cass and I have that now, but we give each other a, a hard time all the time. But we have a good foundation of a friendship. But we're also lovers, so it, it made things it makes things pretty easy. And we're a good team. We communicate. Um, and I was raised by a single mom, so I was always taught to like talk about your emotions, talk about how you feel, talk about you know. So I actually, when I got with her, when I got with Cass, I actually like woke her up to hey, it's okay to talk about your feelings. It's okay to talk about these things. It's okay to open up a little bit because she just wasn't like that. She was an oldest uh, sister. And so usually oldest sisters have to turn into moms at an early age. See, I was an only child by a single mom. So I was just like, I was too mushy gushy as a kid. I was taught about all my feelings and how to feel things. And it's okay. Talk through your emotions and blah, blah, blah. Where she wasn't, she didn't really have that. So we're kind of yin and yang. This is why I say opposites attract. A lot of people go out there and they just look for somebody that is a, a carbon copy of what they are and what their interests are. I want somebody that likes this. I want somebody that likes that. And I want somebody that's this. And like, they're just looking for a clone of themselves. Go out there and look for somebody that's a little bit different from you because you'll compliment each other. It's just like when you eat a dish, if everything's super sweet and nothing's like savory or salty, you know, or buttery, like if you just ate mashed potatoes and then French fries and then tater tots, you'd be like, man, it's a whole lot of starch. I need some variety. Like that's why they do steak and mashed potatoes and green beans. It's a little bit of variety, right? Like you have to switch it up with the person that you're looking for because both of you are going to bring certain things to the table. There's certain things you're lacking that somebody else may be able to fill the gaps. That's what I was looking for in a woman when I found Cassis, I was like, hmm, I'm not really organized. I can't plan things very well. I'm really scatterbrained. I need a woman that can help me like organize things. I need a woman that's very clean. I need a woman that knows how to make a house a home, that knows how to decorate, that knows how to clean correctly, that knows how to make a bathroom look cool. Like I needed that stuff. And so that's where Cass fit in. Now where Cass, where Cass gets a lot out of me is she's not very spontaneous. I have a lot of spontaneity. I'm pretty spontaneous. I'm like, hey, let's go, let's go do something. Let's just head out. Like let's just go do this like cool let's just leave and she's like well we can't do that i'm like yeah we can let's just leave so we like balance off of each other and then also when i met her i was an atheist and she was a christian um and so we 
you know, we were pretty much polar opposites, but they say opposites attract, just like batteries, right? So go try to find somebody that's a little bit different from you. Don't feel like you have to find somebody that just aligns with everything that you believe in. Trust me, it'll get boring. Talking to yourself all day would get really boring. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality. Makes you irresistible to women and respected by men. I'll see you guys in the next one, man. Peace.